What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Jake. Welcome to the JD Cars Automotive YouTube channel. And today on JD Cars, we're going to be tackling a parking brake or emergency brake replacement on our 2014 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport. The parking brake on this rig is in the rear axle on both sides. So that will make things pretty easy. We just have to do one on each side of the rear. But enough talking about it, let's get this thing up on the lift, pull off those rear wheels, and jump into this install. Alright guys, so as with pretty much every install, I've already taken care of the passenger side. I like to do the first side off camera. I typically learn a lot, and I did learn a lot on the passenger side. Got this all installed, and I'm super stoked to tell you guys that we're going to be taking a big shortcut in replacing our parking brake here. Despite what a lot of people say online, saying that you can't replace your brake shoes and springs and hardware without pulling the rear axle shafts, we don't have to pull our rear axle shafts. So that's huge. Typically, you would have to come behind, break your bolts loose, pull the axle shaft, and then access your parking brake, but it's actually totally possible to do without removing the axle shaft. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, let me show you the parts we replaced here. We have our two parking brake shoes. These press out right here on the inside of the drum. We have two big springs, which go on one side. Two little springs go on this side. We have our little threaded adjuster here, which goes right here. Two pins that come through the back of the brake shield, like so and two clips that secure the shoes. So, amazingly, you can actually order all of this new hardware and new brake shoes for like 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon. We went with the Auto Specialty brake shoes. They were a perfect fit. They look good. And then we also did a hardware kit. We did the Robestos H7353 kit. It came with everything you see here except times two. Of course, some of it's already on the Jeep, but we got our two new springs, our new little spring, new adjuster, and I'll show you how to assemble that, two new pins, and two new clips. So let's go tackle the driver's side. After pulling off the wheel, we can actually just pull the rear rotor right off like so. This is where the parking brake makes contact right here like an old drum style brake. After removing our caliper and our rotor we have access to the parking brake here. Mine <laughs> has definitely seen better days. As you can see there is literally nothing here. Um, that is just bare metal and our new shoes you saw they have like an eighth of an inch of material so these are very much overdue <laughs> for replacement you can see our springs are pretty rusted and whatnot so is our adjuster but it should still come out all right when it comes to removing all these springs and whatnot you're gonna have some friends flathead screwdriver I like an assortment of pick tools you might want a little bit heavier duty one these are pretty small needle nose pliers of course and then I also like to have a pair of needle nose vice grips, big pair and a small pair. We start off with the rear spring, which is the easiest to remove. Just pull it off like so. And you should be able to remove your tensioner. You'll turn this all the way to the right on the driver's side and that will make it as loose as possible. You can actually pull apart the shoes a little bit and remove this tensioner. And you can see better how it works here. It's just pretty much a bolt with this little threaded guy on it. And depending on where we position this, if we position it up here, we'll be putting more tension on the shoes. But we're replacing this. So we can throw that away. I wanna focus on the front spring right here. There are two springs in the front, one on the outside of the shoe and one on the back side of the shoe. Back side's a little tricky, but we'll get there in a second. So there's the front spring. Once you've gotten there, I like to take the flathead, pry up our shoes. Once you've got that pried up a bit, you can pry this spring, poke it through the back, and once you pop that loose, you're pretty much ready to remove your shoes. We just have to remove our little clips. Don't worry about crushing these because we're replacing them. Once you remove that little clip, can take off the top shoe and the bottom shoe has the same style clip right here. So we'll just grab that and with the removal of that, off comes our bottom shoe. You can see 
our inside spring and our outside spring, but we are replacing all of that. Let's give this a cleaning with some brake clean and compressed air. Now I'm going to take a little bit of anti-seize and just line our new tensioner bolt with just a little bit of that. Take our new little adjuster, put it onto the bolt, and with that adjuster on there, we can now put the other side on. It's just a friction fit. These two little slits or keys, they match up with our brake shoe, but I'll show you how that works now. First, let's clarify where front and where back is on our shoe. You can see the shoe is pretty much symmetrical, but the holes are different and these little notches are different and that's what's most important. The skinnier notch, that's gonna go in front. This wider notch right here, that's gonna go in the rear. You can tell because this little tensioner assembly that we assembled only fits on the back. That's where that slit lines up and it holds it in there. This doesn't fit on the front. So that's the easiest way to tell them apart. And now before we put this on, you're, you guys are looking at the back side, but I'm gonna put one spring in the back side of the top, and then I'm gonna attach the same spring to the front of the bottom. Now I'm gonna take this and kind of finagle it over, and the reason I'm doing this is because it's a lot easier to put this spring on now than after putting the shoes on. It is a little cumbersome to maneuver with the spring on, but it's possible. Also, make sure that your axle's rotated such that your studs aren't gonna prevent you from bringing the spring through the back, like so. At this point, we're now gonna to wanna to install our new pins and clips, just to get the shoes kinda of locked in place, because adding more springs at this point kinda of just makes things impossible. <laughs> so we're gonna get them locked in place with those little pins. We're gonna take our little pin, go from the back side, and we're gonna bring it through this little hole in the brake shoe. So we'll bring that through, we'll grab our clip, hold the pin from the back side, and uh, try to hold your shoe in place. It's a little cumbersome, but possible. And bring our clip in, you need to stick the pin through, and then rotate it 90 degrees to lock it in place. So the easiest way to do that is to press down. I did get the camera out of the way, I just couldn't do it, but that should hopefully illustrate things for you. You can see, I turned it 90 degrees into that little slit, and now it's locked. So, that's what it should look like when you're done. Here's the bottom one, same deal there. Now, our shoes are actually locked on here, and we can put on our two remaining springs. First, we need to install our little tensioner that we assembled earlier. So, we're gonna spread apart the shoes at the back. You guys probably noticed this was inserted like this last time but that's gonna collect a bunch of dirt and debris inside of this guy because it's not hollow. So I'm gonna flip it around this way, that way it sheds all the dirt and debris. So we'll insert it like so, close the shoes back down on it, and you wanna leave this pretty detensioned, so to speak, so you don't wanna have this spread apart very much. The whole point of this little adjustment knob is so that once these begin to wear, we can spread it apart a little bit, making our parking brake work like it did when we replaced it. But right now, we can leave that pretty much where it is. We're gonna want them pretty close together because we have all this new material here. But with that now installed, we can do our two other springs, starting with the rear one just to balance things out. Just insert the bottom and use some needle nose pliers to put it in the top hole. There we go. And now, last but not least, our front spring. Easiest way to do this, is to get our top spring hooked in. And before we drop it in here, here's the key tool to getting this part done. The little lock-in vice grips. So I'm gonna tighten these down pretty hard, get them positioned on here where it'll be easy to maneuver it, get that clamps down. Now we'll tuck this behind, and we've gotta maneuver it down into this hole right here. Whew, look at that even easier than the other side. And just like that, we're, we're done. Pretty surprising, like really not that difficult. And I'm also surprised that people said it can't be done without removing the axle shaft because we just did. So hope that saves you guys a lot of time. 
Um, in terms of putting our rotors back on, I'm not reinstalling this old rotor, but a little tip to getting your rotor back on, it can be difficult with all this new material opposed to our old ones that have literally nothing. So you'll wanna make sure that your, your uh, brake shoes are centered or else when you try to put them on, it's gonna hit this edge. The easiest way to make sure they're centered is just run your hand along the outside and make sure it matches up with this dust shield. You might have to shift them forward or backward a little, but a good way to tell that they're lined up is that they're flush right here. If you do that, your rotor should go on pretty easily. Of course, I'm going one-handed here, but uh, yeah, just like that, your parking brake is complete. Well, guys, I got a tear into all four calipers, rotors, and pads on this thing now but I'm super stoked to actually have a working parking brake and it's no mystery as to why it wasn't really working before. But I hope you guys found this video helpful. I definitely learned a lot. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you did, please go leave a like down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on JD Cars.